Welcome back! Today we'll be wireframing or sketching interfaces of popular apps like Instagram, YouTube, Google Calendar and Trello. After watching my other sketching interfaces videos, some of you were asking how do I even know what to put on a mock-up? I figured we could reverse engineer some of the popular UIs to give you tools and experience that you need for sketching interfaces from scratch. Welcome to Design Hangout, a series where we talk all things design. The very first app that we're going to sketch today is Instagram and for all the sketching I'll be using the Excalidro app, I'll link it in the description. Let's start with drawing a rectangle, it will be our screen. Let's change the color to just regular black stroke and no background for now. This rectangle is more or less the size and proportions of our screen, but if you want to be exact, you can also go to stats for nerds and then you have all the width and height and all the other dimensions of the element. Let's start from the top of our screen, so let's take a text tool and go with the name of the Instagram user. This is definitely too big, so we can select this text and go with small size, or even we can just manually resize it like this. In Excalibur, Draw, the size of text is basically similar to vectors, so you can resize it any size you want, there is no font sizes here. The next thing that we want to add are those icons, the chevron and then two icons on the right. So I'll take the line and draw a chevron, one line like this and the second line like this. I can select both of them, command G for grouping. Bell icon is quite hard to draw, so I'll just mark it with the diamond shape. And for three dots, I can draw them basically. So the first one, the second one and the third one. And I can also group them together as one icon. Now let's move to the bottom. Let's draw a circle for our Instagram user profile picture. Let's move it here. To mark that this is an image, let's cross out the circle. And those lines are a little bit too sloppy for me, so let's select both of the elements and change the sloppiness to just a medium level. And then let's mark those statistics. I think that at this level we can just use lines here to mark the numbers. I don't think that we need to be very exact here. And then we have some text below, so let's mark it as well. It's going to be a medium sized description here. To make it a little bit cleaner, I will select all of those lines, go to align and align them to the left and push them a little bit to the right. And then the last line is a link. So let's mark the icon as we did it previously with this shape and let's draw a line as well. And now we can move on to buttons. Now we can mark buttons with rectangles. So let's go with the first rectangle then drag holding shift and alt to copy and copy it again. I would like to fit all four buttons here, so I need to shrink them slightly so that they can actually fit in this width of the screen. And I'll take another rectangle here. And since those are quite important parts of the interface, I would like to add actual text. So let me grab text tool, go with following. We can shrink it to just fit it into this button, then go with message drag to copy again and contact. And then we have an icon inside of this button. So let's also cross it out just to keep it simple. Next, we have the highlights. So let's draw the circles. It will be a repeating element. So we have a circle that will be crossed out like this and then the name of it. And basically we can copy those three elements and just drag to copy multiple times just to fill out the screen. We don't need to be really careful about spacing on this level. They need to be more or less spaced out. The level of accuracy that we have here is perfectly fine. And the last element is the grid. And I would like to draw the squares first. I think this size will be a little too small. So let's increase the size slightly here. And just copy it like this. I would like to mark them as pictures as well. So let me cross them out like this the first, the second, and the third. And I think we can copy this row and just put it below. The thing that is missing are those icons here. So let's move the grid a little bit and let's draw the icons. And I think that we can just mark them with the diamond shape. So the first, the second, and the third. And if you would like to, we can also draw a line just to mark that those are tabs and mark an active tab. Of course, we can improve spacing a little bit just to push them slightly to the top and maybe move them out slightly as well. And we have our Instagram interface ready. Now you can compare the low fidelity and high fidelity, how it will look like. By the way, there is a whole playlist on my channel about sketching interfaces. You can like this video and subscribe and watch the other ones as well. The second interface for today is YouTube's interface and this is a desktop interface. So we went with mobile, now let's switch to desktop. Again, we need to start with a frame. I'll take the rectangle tool and just draw over the screenshot here. 
so that we keep the proportions right. Then let me move the screenshot above and the frame below here so that we can see as we're sketching. The very first thing to do would be to set the top bar where the search is. So let's draw a line here. And then we have the left navigation. So I'll also mark it with a line here. I think the proportions are more or less right here. Let's take a line tool and draw the hamburger menu. The first line, then I'll drag to copy just to make sure that we have the same size and it looks proportional. And I can select three of them, command G for grouping. And the next element is the logo. I will not draw any details. I will just mark it with a rectangle more or less with the proportions of this logo. So it's more horizontal than vertical. And I will cross it out just to mark that this is an illustration or some kind of graphical element here. Then we have a search bar. So we need a search and this icon here and then the icon for the voice search. So let's go here. Let's draw a rectangle. I think it's big enough. Let's just center that to our frame. So let's go to align and center. Type in search. And let's move it here into the rectangle. I can draw a search icon because it's really easy. So let's go with a circle and then a line. And let's separate this search button. So it doesn't look like it's only an icon. It actually looks like it's a button as it is on the original design. I'll move the line a little bit here. And the next thing is this microphone. It's an icon button. So let's go with a circular button. And of course, I will not be drawing the microphone icon, but you can do two things. So the first thing that you maybe want to do is to cross it out like this, but it looks like it's just an icon, some kind of illustration. So let's press command Z. And instead, let's put this diamond shape inside of our circle, just to make sure that it looks like it's an icon button type of element. I think it mirrors better what we see in, on the screen here. And then we have our avatar and two other icons. So let's just mark it quickly with a circle. And here, because it's a photo, we can definitely cross it out. So you can see the difference. This is the avatar and this is the icon button. And then we have two icons. We will also not sketch them. So let's have this diamond shape, the first one and the second one. And our top bar is ready. Now let's focus on the left navigation. We have some icons with labels, six of them. So let's mark them quickly. Let's go with our diamond shape like this. And at this point, it doesn't matter what the labels are actually for our design. So we can just mark them as just lines here. But in some cases, you would like to write down what actual labels are. And let's select both of those elements, command G for grouping. And we can basically drag to copy, holding option and shift. Fourth, five and six. And we have our left navigation ready. There is nothing else in the left navigation bar here. Now let's focus on the bar of those buttons. Those are the filter buttons. So we have multiple buttons with text inside of them and the chevrons here on the right and on the left. And definitely it doesn't really matter what the text is also in this interface because it will change depending on the user. So let's also create some generic buttons. Let's go with the rectangle tool. Let's mark a button like this and let's add some text just like this. And it is perfectly acceptable to do it this way. If you're sketching manually, you can even add like a wavy line just to make it sh make sure that this looks more like text. Let's select both of those elements, command G and basically copy that a couple of times just to fill out the whole width. And it looks basically like it is in the YouTube interface. Let's move it slightly to the left. So there is still space for the chevron and I want to adjust the last button. So we have space for chevron here. I need to enter the group by double clicking, adjust the line and adjust the rectangle. And now I will draw a chevron, one line like this and the second line like this. Escape just in case Excalibur is making some weird shapes for you. And you can select both of them, command G, command C for copying. And I would like to paste it around here and I right click to flip vertically. No, to flip horizontally. I'm always messing it up. And let's zoom out and let's see our bar of filters. And the last big element here is the star of the show. So our grid of videos. We need to create a template for ourselves for one of those videos with all the elements and just copy it multiple times. So the first thing I will do is to measure the size of the video. So I would like to fit four of them in the space that I have. And more or less it will be like this, but let's double check before we commit to the size. Oh, it's definitely too big. Let's go with the second one, third one, fourth one. This is too small. So let's go with something in the middle. Second one, third one, 
fourth one. I think we can make something slightly smaller work. So let's delete the remaining ones. And now let's cross out our rectangle like this. And now it looks like an illustration or a photo. So I would like to draw a circle in the middle, add white background to it so it covers the cross of the lines, and then draw a play icon. So a little rectangle like this. And now let's select all of the elements, Command G for grouping, and we have our video. Then we have the avatar title. So let's go with a circle. Let's cross it out as well. We need a title. Also, we can mark it with lines, so it's more generic. I can edit the line so it fits better. And the second line here. And then we have smaller text, two lines of it. So what I would like to do, you can either just follow up with more text here, or you can try to differentiate it slightly with color so it's less prominent. So you can see that it is like a secondary information. So now it's clear that those are probably some metadata. And here we have the title. I can probably push it closer. And now we have the whole element. We can group it together and basically copy it multiple times. Just drag to copy. I want to space it out more or less at the end of those filters, the same way as it is here. And I can select all four elements, go to align and then distribute horizontally. And then select four of them and copy it vertically like this. I think we need a little bit more space at the top. And let's try to mimic this cutout experience here. So let's copy that again. And you can definitely tell that we'll just see a little bit of the videos. So Excalibur doesn't have the concept of a frame as Figma has. So you cannot cut out this, the content that basically is outside of frame. So we need to be a little bit more handcrafty here. Let's try to do it with a rectangle. So let's try a rectangle like this one. Let's remove the stroke. So let's go with a transparent one. And let's bring this outline that we've created at the very beginning to the front. So bring to front. And I think it's a decent solution just to mark it like this. Of course, those are sketches, so we don't have to be exact. And we have our YouTube interface ready. It seemed like a lot of work at the very beginning when we saw it with full high fidelity, but actually for sketching, we have a lot of repeating elements, so it was fairly quick. The next interface that I would like to show you is Google Calendar. And here we will not be drawing it from scratch. I think after drawing two interfaces already, you have an idea about how to shape different elements. Here we will focus only on the one interesting detail that I would like to draw with you. It is this particular meeting with the background illustration. I want to show you how to mark the background illustration. So starting with the rectangle, let's draw a slightly bigger rectangle than the remaining meetings to fit our illustration. And I would like to draw the text as well. So it will be three lines of texts like this. And the third one. And at this stage, we can do two things. We can either mark our illustration just on the right, just to mark that there will be some visual element later on. And in high fidelity, we can make a decision to make it a background illustration. And the second option would be to draw the lines across the whole rectangle like this, the first line and the second line, and then select both of them and change the color to something lighter, like light gray like this, or maybe even lighter one. So this marks that the illustration will take up the whole rectangle. So it's a background illustration. And the last thing that we need to do here is to bring those three lines to the front so that they are not covered with the gray lines and it actually the hierarchy makes sense. And then we can copy this event once again to the bottom so that we have this flight marked as well. And the last interface for today is Trello. And also I would like to show you the low fidelity and the high fidelity that I've prepared. So when it comes to the high fidelity, we have the board view. So those are the columns of the board. Each of the columns has cards. Then we have two toolbars, the one here and the one at the very top. And in low fidelity, we need to mimic this interface. So you can see here that in high fidelity, we had a really big differentiation between the first toolbar and the second one. Here in low fidelity, we can just mark them this way. They have a little bit of a different hierarchy. You can add some background to the top bar if you really want to, but it's not really necessary. And you can see all the functionality from different tabs and search through all the other icons and board selection, etc. And when it comes to drawing a board, it's important to make it as easy for you as possible. So what I did was I've created this first column with a card that was like a template card for me. So it had all three labels, three lines of text, 
and some icons here. And to create all other cards, I was basically removing elements. So for example, if I wanted to remove labels, I just remove labels and there is another variation of the card. And then you can just copy paste this column multiple times and use different variations of the card so that there is this variety in the interface. So it doesn't look like it was just copy pasted. And this is it for Trello. It was a pretty simple interface. If you want to see how to build a Kanban board from scratch, I have a separate video where there is a tutorial from low fidelity to high fidelity. Thank you for joining me for this sketching exercise. I hope that after today's session, you will feel more confident when wireframing interfaces. As per usual, I've selected some other videos that you might like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you over in the next one.